Assalamu alaikum, peace be upon you. I answered this atheist, but he unfortunately didn't comment on the two basic concepts that I've presented in my episode. My first essential idea is why would secularism be the sole legislator? Why doesn't Islam have the right of legislation like secularism? Why doesn't Islam have the right to punish whoever violates the Islamic constitution just like secularism which punishes whoever violates the secular constitution? Apostate Prophet Hay, do you have an answer? The second essential concept that I presented is that Islam is the only religion that has never changed. Meanwhile, Christianity and Judaism have hidden penalties. They have hidden the divine law. They have hidden Sharia. In this way, Christianity and Judaism ruined the monotheism that all prophets came with and founded. So Islam is the only religion that has remained committed to monotheism. Such monotheism that all prophets came with and called for. All other religions were distorted and forged. Do you have any comment on this argument? I post it. Your episode is totally out of context. Let us listen to what you have said. In the West, it is very common to support people who go out there to spread information. This is how the Western world has made so much progress in the last few centuries, because information has been valued. In the beginning, you try to apologize for receiving funds in order to spread atheism. Do you spread information? Do you give people signs or just lies and nonsense? Islam is a political system, an ideology, not just a religion. A political system from the 7th century that tries to rule in our time. This is the essence. Islam isn't a set of symbolic rituals. Islam is a religion and a state. Islam is a way of life. Islam is a doctrine and practice. You want Islam to be new Hinduism. You want Islam to be a silly yoga. Just a nonsense exercise and then go to work. Did God bring us to this life? Since the prophets are revealed the holy box, just to stay five minutes in a mosque or in a meditation session, staring at a candle and then leave just like this? If you don't dictate your life to religion and God, then you don't know the meaning of life. Allah says in the Quran, قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Say my prayer and my sacrifice and my life and my death are for Allah, the Lord of the world. In Islam, everything belongs to Allah. Caesar is a slave to God and everything he had are the property of God, even if Caesar rejected. Atheists and seculars don't see any problem with these laws, but they don't accept the punishment for those who violate the Islamic law in Islamic countries. Wow, he just equated the burqa ban to killing apostates from Islam and pointed out that if people don't have a problem with the burqa ban, they should also not have a problem with the fact that an Islamic system kills people who don't believe in it anymore. I don't equal between burqa ban, niqab ban, and the execution of apostates. You say things that I never said. You use the Stroman fallacy. You are deliberately forging my words. I compare between the laws of secular protection of the secular system and the laws of religious protection of the religious system. Although the secular state can criminalize whoever violates its constitution, the Islamic state can criminalize whoever violates its constitution. With the same logic, why do you use fallacies? He further says that atheists have no morals, and that they are therefore bad, and anti-humanistic in nature which is incredibly stupid and a distortion of what an, what an atheist really is. The reason I am called an atheist is that I don't believe in God or in Allah. That doesn't say anything at all about my set of morals and laws. I am an atheist. Atheism means the denial of Allah. And don't discuss the issue of morals. Atheism has repercussions that includes all aspects of life. By denying Allah, you will be just a matter. And then you are indifferent from insects, as Jean-Paul Sartre said. If you are a matter, so there is no difference between you 
and any rock. You will be like a rock, as Carl Sagan said. There is nothing in atheism like absolute or objective morality with which you can condemn and stigmatize an action or behavior. Because in atheism, we are the sons of matter, and matter isn't subjected to teleological goals or absolute morals. You are an atheist. Then you are like an omelet egg. You don't have a frame or moral distinctions. Friedrich Helvold, the anthropologist, said, Just as in nature, the struggle for existence is the moving principle of evolution and perfection, so also in world history, the destruction of the weaker nations through the stronger is a postulate of progress. Now I ask you a question, and I wish that you answer. Why anyone should obey the morality rule, not the natural or Darwinian rule? Why we should be humanists? Why should anyone violate the Darwinian rule? Like the annihilation of the weak races, annihilation of the inferior races. You have these valuable standards inside yourself that don't belong to this world because you aren't designed according to Darwinian laws. Unfortunately, by your atheism, you became like a clown. You believe in atheism and at the same time, you believe in absolute morality. You have two contradicting religions in your mind at the same time. In atheism, there is no problem with annihilating children by napalm bombs, as Arthur Allen Leaf said. You should understand your atheism well before you defend it. You reject stealing and killing, but you don't have objective basis according to atheism. Hitler is better than you, yeah, because Hitler wasn't a clown. Hitler understood Darwinism very well. He knew its meaning and tried to apply its rules steadfastly. But new atheists are just clowns, trying to beautify atheism without any mental, logical, or scientific basis for this beautification. I wish you read my book, Creed or Chaos. Its link is at the first link in the description. It explains this contradiction between atheism and human being. But you can ask me, if you go to Europe, and criticize the Islam in public, they have no problem with that. And the same thing if you criticize it Christianity. The answer is because the center in those countries is secularism, not religion. So criticize your religion as you wish. But you cannot criticize secular foundations or Patriot Act will with you. What kind of world is this guy living in? Dear Arab listeners who listen to this guy, everyone over here who hears these words, who hears this doctor speak is probably laughing right now or thinking that he's on some weird drugs or very crazy. You can fully criticize the secular foundations of the West without any problems. You have free speech in the West. And instead of insulting and ridicule, read and learn, casting doubts on the secular principles in Europe would lead to prison. If you are in Austria and you did historic or scientific research that spreads doubts, about the Holocaust, then 20 years in prison is waiting for you. And if you are in Czech Republic, you could be imprisoned for 8 years. This woman, who is 8 years old, has been held in prison because she expressed doubts about the same subject. There are 16 European countries that criminalize the historic research on this subject. Are you still insulting and mocking? Learn before you insult. If you just doubt the case of Darwinism, you could lose all research funding. When Michael Egnor, the famous American neurologist, said that doctors don't need to study theory of evolution, he was threatened to get fired from the university. It wasn't just biologists who were feeling the Darwinist wrath. When neurosurgeon Michael Egnor wrote an essay to high school students saying doctors didn't need to study evolution in order to practice medicine, the Darwinists were quick to try and exterminate this new threat. A lot of people on a lot of blogs called me um, unprintable names that were printed. <laughs> there are a lot of very, very nasty comments. Um, <clears throat> other people suggested that people call the university I work at and uh, suggested perhaps it's time for me to retire. I realized when I kind of went public with, with my doubts about the adequacy of Darwin's theory, uh, that uh, you know that I would encounter criticism. Uh, what has uh, amazed me is the um, uh, viciousness and the, the sort of uh, baseness of it.
Carolyn Krukar was expelled for the same reason. After Dr. Caroline Crocker simply mentioned intelligent design in her cell biology class at George Mason University, her promising academic career came to an abrupt end. Robert Marcus, Guillermo Gonzalez, and many others. I'm an old guy, I have uh, tenure, I'm academically safe, but the young people and what, what is happening to them in America right now because of this scientism gulag is, uh, is really terrible. Apparently, Professor March was not as safe as he thought. A few months after this interview, Baylor University shut down his research website and forced him to return grant money once they discovered a link between his work and intelligent design. In order to attract grants, you have to market yourself. So you put up sites and call yourself labs and groups and things like that in order to get visibility. And in my entire experience in academia, I never went to any superior and asked them any permission to put up any of these labs. So uh, the fact that this was singled out, let alone shut down, is jaw-dropping. It's astonishing. I have never been uh, treated like this in my about 30 years. Do you still insist on salt and mock? Let me tell you a bit of the bloody history of atheism against science and scientists. On August 1940, the atheist Joseph Stalin ordered the execution of the world's most famous geneticist at the time, Nikolai Vavilov. Vavilov has been killed because he tried to teach Mendel's laws of heredity. That was against the theory of evolution. Have you heard of the name Lysenkoism? That campaign led by atheists against geneticists, 3,000 scientists have been killed. Do you know this information? You have to learn before you insult. The World War II, in which 5% humans were annihilated. It was a war between atheists and agnostics. World War II was a fight between agnostics and atheists. <laughs> Rewrite your books, everybody. In East of Lavin, reading history, the fight in the Second World War was between atheists and agnostics. Yeah, Hitler is a Nazi leader, and he was between deism and agnosticism according to the most famous historian of the Nazi era, Alan Bullock. Heinrich Himmler, one of the Hitler's most powerful commanders, the chief of secret police, and who was responsible for the crimes of genocide, who was agnostic too. Martin Bormann, the chancellor of the Nazi, and Hitler's successor in the party leadership, was an atheist. Josef Goebbels, Hitler's propaganda minister, was agnostic. On the other side of the war, the opposite side, Joseph Stalin, the commander of the Soviet Union, was an atheist. George Yikov, the commander of the Soviet army, was an atheist. Lavranti Beraya, the head of Soviet security forces, was an atheist. Ivan Konev, the commander of the military operations of the Soviet army, was an atheist. All the leaders of Soviet army were atheists. It was actually a war between atheists and agnostics. Heinrich Himmler, the chief of the secret police, who was agnostic, said that the goal of the war is the victory of Obermensch and annihilate the Untermensch. Untermensch means the lowest evolutionary races, including Slavs, especially the Slavs of Poland, the Slavs of Serbia, Jews, black people, all of them considered Untermensch and were shown by the German propaganda in images like chimpanzees with weapons and they should be exterminated quickly to 140,000 of disabled and those who have chronic diseases have been killed by Nazi. In the statistics about the real number of the inferior races which are annihilated by Nazi, there were 14 million people. The majority of this number was Jews and Polish Slavs. Subhuman, the inferior races, untermensch, annihilation of disabled, annihilation of complete nations. These expressions didn't appear except when atheism emerged. I challenge an atheist to show a piece of evidence from the atheistic point of view that could condemn what Nazi has done. We all know now that Hitler was a criminal and a butcher. Why? Because we have a legal commissioning from God inside our hearts. We bear the absolute moral principles. And not because Hitler was scientifically 
or evolutionary wrong. No, Hitler was wrong because we are humans and we are not fitted with Darwinism. We are not fitted with natural selection. This is the right answer. Hitler was a criminal according to divine commissioning, but he was very practical and honest to himself according to evolution, atheism, agnosticism, and materialism. Don't forget to read my book, Creator Chaos. See you again, inshallah. Ilahi wasi'u al-karami wa rabbu al-bayti wal-harami Ilayka ataytu munkasiran muniban aghbaru al-qadami Ilahi wasi'u al-karami wa rabbu al-bayti wal-harami Ilayka ataytu munkasiran